Well, welcome everyone to the special meeting, uh, Orangeboro Board of Commissioners, May 18th, 2021. Uh, at this time, I would ask our city clerk, Beth Davis, to please call the roll. Mayor Tom Watson. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Larry Maglaner. Here. Commissioner Mark Caslin. Here. Commissioner Bob Glenn. Here. Commissioner Jeff Sanford. Here. Thank you. At this time, we'll have the invocation and the pledge uh, by Commissioner Glenn. Bow with me and pray or meditate as is your practice. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much and with great enthusiasm for the many blessings you provide. Our beautiful location is a city on the Ohio River. The blessings of a good, caring, and compassionate people who make this place their home. The blessings of the changing of the seasons that we're appreciating at this very moment. And the blessings for the excellent family of city employees at all levels who keep our community moving forward and in the right direction. And tonight, Lord, we also ask for your guidance and help so that we make good decisions in the midst of the challenges of our time, COVID, political polarization, and also a changing economy. Lord, we'd also ask to give us in our hearts an appreciation for our people as, and their diversity as much as we appreciate the diversity of our economy. And finally, Lord, help us move our city and commonwealth forward with decisions that reflect and honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. And now the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the next item on the agenda is retirement recognitions. Uh, I'm going to read a joint statement about uh, Greg Kelly and Jeff Tong. Greg Kelly is electrician with the Public Works, and Jeff Tong, facilities maintenance manager, and do all for the city for how many years, anyway? Uh, after 27 years of service to the city of Orangeboro, Jeff and Greg Riley are setting their sights on a well deserved retirement. On November the 7th, 1994, Jeff Tong began a long and prosperous career with the city of Orangeboro. 20 of the last 27 years, Jeff has served as role in the role of facilities maintenance manager, where he has provided the overall management, organization, planning, and administration of the facilities maintenance department. Two weeks later, on November the 21st, 1994, Greg Kelly joined our team and served as the city's electrician for the last 27 years, maintaining electrical and other maintenance work for all city pro properties, facilities, and buildings. The city of Owensboro has benefited greatly from Jeff and Greg's leadership and their knowledge. Their hard work, diligence, and many contributions will be missed by many. While Jeff and Greg will be missed, they certainly deserve their retirement and we wish them the very best in the, their future endeavors. Uh, Jeff and Greg were unable to be here tonight, so we'll make sure they get their certificate of outstanding service. The next person on the uh, retirement section is Captain Billy Wilson. Billy Wilson was hired as a firefighter with the Orangeboro Fire Department on April of 2001. 2001. At that time, he had already had experience as an EMT and as a volunteer firefighter in Davis County. Billy rose up through the ranks of OFD from firefighter to engineer to lieutenant and finally was promoted to his present rank of fire captain on August the 9th, 2015. At each step of his career, Billy has been a friend, a teacher, a leader, and the first one to put himself in harm's way to help those who need help the most. The members of the Owensboro Fire Department will deeply miss Billy's experience and his character. But even more than this, we will hold on to the deeper sense of gratitude for the lives that we have seen him save and the other firefighters who will be better at what they do for having worked alongside Captain Billy Wilson. 
Well, I think Captain's here, so let's give him a round of applause. Natural there, Mayor. Good, you're a natural. Too bent out of shape. Let's get him, baby. Need a pen? Oh, Pam used to have. She used to have like air things. No, sir. No, sir. It's five minute minimum. Five, five minute minimum. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Don't get it started about his family. We'll be here all the
that's good stuff. Okay, the next item on the agenda is a proclamation for um, police officers. So uh, if you'll allow me to read this, I'd appreciate it. Another precinct heard from. Okay, here we go. City of Orangeboro Proclamation. Whereas there are more than 800,000 law enforcement officers serving in communities across the United States, including the dedicated members of the Orangeboro Police Department. And whereas we have been, there have been 56,034 assaults against law enforcement officers in 2019, resulting in approximately 17,000 188 injuries and whereas since the first recorded death in 1786 more than 22,600 law enforcement officers in the United States have made the ultimate sacrifice and have died in the line of duty and whereas the names of these dedicated public servants are engraved on the walls of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial in Washington DC and whereas 394 new names of fallen officers have been added to the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial this spring, including 295 officers who died in 2020 and 99 officers who died in previous years. And whereas the service and sacrifice of all officers killed in the line of duty will be honored during the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund 33rd virtual annual candlelight vigil on the evening of May the 13th, 2021. Whereas May 15th is des designated as Peace Officers Memorial Day in honor of the fallen officers and their families, and U.S. flags should be flown at half staff. Now, therefore, I, Thomas H. Watson, Mayor of the City of Orangeboro, to hereby claim May 9th through the 15th as 2021 of 2021 as Police Week in Orangeboro, Kentucky, and publicly salute the service of law enforcement officers in our community and in our communities across the nation. Signed and sealed this May 2020. So I think we need to stand and thank these guys, even though they're not here. <laughs> Bill? Okay. Chief, you want to come up for a picture? Oh, okay. Mayor Watson, Mayor Pro Tem, and commissioners, thank you for this proclamation. Uh, it's a very dangerous job and often unappreciated, but we certainly, as members of the Owensboro Police Department, appreciate your, your all's recognition for this. So thank you. And Officer Evans, the boots on the ground. All too often as department heads, we come up, take pictures, get our handshake, take the proclamation or awards or whatever, but uh, I'm not the one responding to calls anymore. It's people like Officer Dylan Evans. So thank you again. Thank you, Chief. Right. Okay. The next proclamation uh, from the city of Orangeboro is for public works. Whereas public works professionals focus on infrastructure, facilities, and services that are vital importance to the sustainable and resilient communities and to the public health, high quality of life, and well-being of the people of Owensboro. And whereas these infrastructure, facilities, and services could not be provided without the dedicated efforts of public works professionals who are engineers, managers, and employees 
at all levels of government and the private sector who are responsible for rebuilding, improving, and protecting our nation's transportation, water supply, water treatment, solid waste systems, public buildings, and other structures and facilities essential for our citizens. Whereas it is, a public it is the public interest for citizens, civic leaders, and children in Orangeboro to gain knowledge of and to maintain an ongoing interest and understanding of the importance of public works and public works programs in their respective communities. Whereas the year 2021 marks the 61st annual National Public Works Week in the American Public Works Association. Now therefore, I, Thomas Hart Watson, Mayor of the City of Orangeboro, do hereby proclaim the week of May 16 to 22 of 2021 as National Public Works Week in Orangeboro and I urge all citizens to join in recognizing public works professionals, engineers, managers, employees, and other substantial contributions they make to protecting our national health, safety, and quality of life. Stephen Franklin, front and center. All right. We got pictures, Rip and Graham. On, on behalf of, of Public Works, I will say, Mayor, Commission, thank you. Thanks for recognizing us. Thanks for the, uh, the uh, acknowledgement. Um, staff is a, a thrilled to be acknowledged, so thank you guys. That was fun. I need to have some fun around here. Item 4C is the Police Department 2020 Annual Report, the one and only Chief Art Elam. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You all have our uh, annual report today. Um, we wanted to talk briefly about some of our crime stats for 2020 uh, in comparison to that of 2019. We observed no change from 2020 to 2019. The um, violent crimes, that is. We did have one additional murder, but however, that was balanced out by, you know, other crime categories. Uh, I will say this, that although we had one additional murder, uh, in, in reviewing crime stats, when it comes to violent crime, I did something because, you know, all the time you hear about magazines reporting misin misinformation, uh, whereas they portray cities like ours that have incidents of crime as you know, being violent, dangerous to live in, and that's not necessarily the truth. Uh, I did some research, and it seems that 69% of our violent crime was, cr was caused by someone that was known to the victim. So boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, husband, uncle, aunt, you know, there was some relationship there, or it could be an ex situation. So I guess what I'm saying is we don't have a boogeyman, so to speak, to where, you know, if you go to the park, there's a chance you're gonna be robbed, that's not it. Um, these are, are people that are known to, you know, the perpetrators, uh, oftentimes. So, um, in speaking to that, our part, one, our part one crimes, property crimes, we, we did observe a 5.63% decrease. Um, so, that's what, very good. We had an increase in vehicle thefts. However, uh, last year or earlier in the year, last the end of the last year, I think, um, there was a suspect that we apprehended. I think it was the same guy that had jumped in the car at the gas station you all read yeah. about and, and stole the car that had the young child in the back. Well, he was responsible for a number of the uh, vehicle thefts that we had, and he's been charged with multiple counts, some we couldn't prove but uh, at least 14. So that tends to drive the number up as well. And you know, simple things that people can do is like at a gas station, turn your car off and lock your door. And, and you know, people have the tendency to, you know, leave their car running and then it's like, oh, I wanna run in and get a pack of gum or a six pack of beer or something like that. And 
you come out and your car is gone. So there's simple things that, that could prevent situations like that. And that is just simply locking your door and removing the keys. I will say this, there is a positive sign so far. The first uh, third of this year, 2021, we, we are trending well below our stats from the same time period last year. In fact, last year, from January 1st through April 30th, we had two homicides. This year, we have zero, knock on wood. Um, rapes are down by three, minus 27.27%. Robberies are down by five, another 27.78% decrease over the same time period last year. So assaults are down 3.45%, just one the net change of one. So overall, 18.33%, we are down. Of course, we always report our clearance rate, which is much better than the national average and much better than the Kentucky average. Uh, the Owensboro Police Department had a 72% clearance rate of all violent crimes. Uh, the national average is 46%. The property crime clearance rate was 39%. The national average is 17%. So. Of course, we don't want any crime, and sometimes you have to uh, play the cards you've been dealt. So we have people in places, you know, whether it be the officers on the street to do an excellent job of gathering information, and when needed, call out a detective, and the investigation continues. Uh, we just charged uh, a couple of individuals for the vandalism at the parking garage last night uh, that spray painted a van and then spray painted the uh, camera as well. So uh, they were being interviewed this afternoon when I walked through CID. So, so quick apprehension, detection, and then charges, you know, help somewhat to deter crime like that. Um, if you all looked in your annual reports there, I, I wanted to touch briefly on use of force stats because it's been mischaracterized as excessive use of force, and that's not it at all. Um, when we talk about use of force in law enforcement, some, some agencies call it a response to resistance. Well, to me, they're one and the same. One just sounds a little harsher than the other. So if somebody takes off running from an officer and the officer is trying to catch them and enforce some type of police action, a legitimate police action, if that officer pushes that individual down to the ground, the Owensboro Police Department completes a use of force report. Some agencies, don't classify that as a use of force. However, we do. Anytime we take some type of physical action uh, to gain control of someone, we deem that a use of force. And as uh, part of our policy, officers are required to complete a use of force report. So the stats seem a lot higher than some agencies, but not all agencies actually report uses of force. And, um, and this is something, it's not excessive. It could be something as simple as a shove to a wall or it could be a strike where somebody's being combative. Mr. Mayor, you read in your proclamation about how many officers have been injured over the past year. Well, some of those officers in your count are your officers with the Owensboro Police Department. We've had a number of officers injured over the years and we, we deal with the public that if they don't want police action taken against them, they're gonna fight. Uh, some people just run out of fear, but uh, chances are they run because they got drugs in their pocket, they have warrants on them, or um, you could argue that they're scared of the police. But th there's nothing to fear. If, if you surrender, if you have warrants on you, all we're gonna do is put handcuffs on you, take you to jail, that's it. But to fight a police officer and to expect nothing to happen, you know, it, it just doesn't work that way. Our job is to enforce laws and warrants, so we don't have a choice in the matter when it comes to serving warrants. So. That is um, some things that we deal with. So I said all that to say this. Um, in the use of force data that we reported, we had <clears throat> excuse me one second. 68.75 percent of force was used against Caucasians. 28.91% uh, was used against African-Americans. Now that number is higher than the percentage, but 
uh, of the number, of, demographically speaking. However, you have to look at the actions that were taken against officers and to avoid apprehension. So it doesn't come down to race that officers are targeting anybody by race. Uh, it is very simply this, is if you resist, if you run, we're gonna chase you. I mean, that's our jobs. Uh, if we have a reason to be there. And it has to be a legitimate law enforcement reason. So, and if you fight and officers have to take you down to the ground by using an arm bar, or arm bar takedown or something like that, that is uh, as a result of your actions. So uh, I can't help it that the number is this high and, and it's much deeper than the police. I can say, we can go in all day long and say, we're not going to do anything except arrest you. And there's people that say, no, you're not, I'm not doing it. And this has not changed since 1991 when I worked on the streets. You know, When I was hired, we dealt with the same thing. So it's not uh, specific to any race. I mean, women are just as combative at times as men. I think, uh, yeah, 16.41% of the females that we arrested fought. And, uh, and that could be because they're high on drugs. Uh, and we deal with a lot of mental illness in this community. So people have it in their minds that they're not going to jail. A lot of them will tell you, and we don't have a choice. We can't just say, okay, well, we'll just go back to home, back home or back to the station. That's not it. Once we're there you know, for a legitimate purpose, we have to take action. So uh, I, I will say we had nearly 46,000 contacts with people in this community, police related contacts, you know, 7,000, over 7,000 in traffic stops, 38 plus thousand in calls for service. And we had 11, I shared this information with you all uh, during the budget work session. We had 11 external complaints of 33. The rest were internal where we reviewed video footage or something happened and it came to our attention. Even if somebody called and said, hey, we had this issue with this officer, but I don't want to file a formal complaint. Once they bring it to our attention, you can't unring that bell. So if we have an officer out there that's doing something inappropriately, we have a duty to look into it, whether we've got a formal complainant or not. So, uh, and we do that. And, and unfortunately, you know, we did have sustained complaints. I think the number was somewhere in the neighborhood of 18. But, um, Uh, 46,000, yeah. So, okay, we had um, 18 sustained complaints, 10 were exonerated, uh, three not sustained, and one was unfounded. And, and that's probably because they had the wrong officer, wrong agency, and we don't investigate uh, uh, formal complaints against other departments. But I, I would say we go well above and beyond to address issues within our organization. You see it all the time, the disciplinary actions that are being recommended that you all support the police department on because you know, uh, when you have the authority to take someone's freedom away, we have to do our absolute best to make sure the people that we put on the street are, are best suited for this community. And if we don't, anything, un uh, anything contrary to that, you know, it's just uh, a level of injustice for the members of this community. So um, that is our goal, that is our mission, and we're, we're going to stick with it. And we might lose people. You know, we are shorthanded, but we are not desperate. So if somebody's not suited to be a police officer, and, and we we do hire them, and we discover later on, uh, we take every step to remove them. So I'll, I'll open it up for questions if you have any. Commissioner Sanford. Uh, first of all, Chief, I'd like to thank you. And guys, I think you do a terrific job. I think uh, you know, not very many people can do what you guys do every day. And, and all the good things that you do. You know, uh, watching a, a, a video uh, on TV of uh, an officer carrying a child through New, uh, in New York City in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. There needs to be more of that on, on TV instead of all the negative things. That, that really touched me, uh, the officer carrying the child that had been shot to safety. It's uh, with all the good things you, you do every day nationwide, all the police officers, not enough bandwidth to cover it. I think you're covered by some negative things unfairly. And, and, some, and I, I agree, some officers have done some things, but 
in general, it's so minuscule that it, it's just a, it's a tiny fraction. There, there's bad people in everything. But you guys are in, in this city, and I've ridden, ridden with you, you do a, a great job. So, and that comes from leadership. And I've been here with other chiefs, and I appreciate you and everything you've done. Thank uh, you. Thank you. That's all, man. I just got a text. Man, we are so fortunate to have that guy as chief, top shelf leader. Oh yeah, from the community. From the community guy. Yeah. So that that's uh, very impressive. And, and you know, there are bad folks in every profession: mayors, commissioners, city managers. You know, and that's just the way life is. We can't figure it out. That's why Baskin Robbins makes all those flavors. Don't anybody <laughs> like vanilla? Yeah. So it's it. We're we are blessed to have your leadership, and and we'll try and support you as absolutely far as we can go to make sure that our community gets the policing that it deserves and is getting now. Thank you. Quick question. Commissioner Glenn? Yes. Um, cold cases. Do we have an officer that is retired or a current active officer who handles cold cases? Uh, from time to time when things slow down, we have some people that uh, uh, dig into cold cases. Um, and we, we have quite a few. Uh, a man called me about uh, a case stemming from back in the 70s, I believe. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't know that anybody's looked at it. I actually questioned somebody about it. And of course, he, he, he lied about what we're, I, I'm assuming he lied about what he was saying, but he denied it anyway. So, um, but yeah, I mean, you, if you have a particular case, you can get with me after the uh, meeting. Well, I know we've had a lot with the river, you know, bodies have washed up on the river. And, right. You know, years go by, and the family has never had a resolution. It's not just our department, it's kind of this whole region. Right. And I wondered if we'd ever consider creating kind of a regional cold case task force, maybe working with Madisonville or DPD or Henderson to kind of pool our resources and see if we come up with some clues that might work. With DNA, that would be the other issue with all the forensic science you have available, you didn't have available in the 60s and 70s. I know they've had amazing results uh, over the years. Yeah. But I do want to thank you for the great work your men and women do. Uh, just this week, uh, you had uh, arrested somebody in Corbett Henry, Slane, uh, which I think just ripped our hearts out for 15 year old child be riding in the back of a bike and get shot. And, uh, and then you arrested uh, folks for the vandalism of the middle town. I know your officers are working on it every day on our behalf, and we are, again, to echo uh, our likes and blessed to have you leading us and your officers doing just the terrific work that you're doing. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, you know, the officers do a fantastic job. Again, you know, the ones that are on the street responded to calls for service uh, a lot of times. I, I can't tell you how often officers get called to do non-police related functions. You know, my pipe burst in my house. Um, we're not we're not plumbers. Um, Will y'all come <laughs> fix my plumbing? Yeah, exactly. And, um, and and I get it. You know, we can get there probably the fastest. But, uh, you know, my six year old won't go to school. So, you know, you call the police and that's a parental issue. It has nothing to do with police. But they call us because we are the first thing that they think of uh, our agency, our officers or what have you. And it puts us in an awkward position, one that, you know, if you notice the national trend now and the conversation is to take police out of some of these situations involving mental health and you know juveniles and situations that are not uh, police related so we struggle with that but um, our detectives are, are, are killing it they do an excellent job and I, I think a lot of times people don't understand that they are carrying you know probably 40 to 50 cases each so they have to divide their time and prioritize their time and deal with stuff and oftentimes they are at the mercy of other entities you know whether it's waiting for KSP to process DNA uh, some things we do ourselves like fingerprints uh, so that's a true benefit and like you touched on the DNA from bodies in the river and such uh, it is it is an asset now to have that technology and capability available to us so but yes yeah, thank you all and if you ever have any questions feel free to call on me I guess the, th the takeaway is, like my father said when he handed the keys to the car, he goes, 
don't resist arrest. <laughs> no. <laughs> Nothing yeah. bad is going to happen to you if you just don't arrest. Yeah. You know, uh, so God bless. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you all. That's a hard act to follow. But we have to uh, consider the minutes for May 4th, May 11. Motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Uh, I am six ordinance, second reading. This will be a roll call vote. Uh, City Clerk, please. Thank you. Ordinance 7 2021, an ordinance adopting and approving the annual budget of the City of Owensboro, Kentucky for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2021, and ending July 30, 2022 in appropriating the revenues to the various departments of the city as set forth herein. Publicly read for approval on second reading this 18th day of May, 2021. Thank you, I'll make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. Uh, city Manager, do you have any comments? Mayor, we've discussed this document at length previously and I gave a summary at the last meeting. I'm happy to do so again if you'd like or take questions, whichever you would prefer. I just have a comment. Um, I know we, I speak for myself, don't understand uh, municipal accounts. Uh, I'd like for you, the city manager, to consider next time we do budget. You know, I'd like to have an opportunity to give you any of the, com the diet wants, any of the commissioners want to. to Try and set in and get a, a, a viewpoint of what finance people are saying or what parks people are saying. Um, not to say that the old way wasn't a good way, but you remember when we did it before and we had opportunity to listen instead of just having a book hand that's this thick and not that we don't. I personally would like to have a little more information as I improve, approve the budget um, of this size, knowing full well that our, our department heads and our employees do a great job. But it's almost like, you know, we're just carte blanche saying, okay, you decide what the budget is and we approve it. And we have the opportunity to read that book, but it's tough. And I'd just like to, for you to consider possibly uh, allowing some input or some discussion uh, w when you do your budget uh, with all your s department heads. That's, and like I said, I may be all by myself on this, and if I am, then don't worry about it because your term is we only have three votes. So, but it just seems, you know, difficult, uh, especially people that are busy, to try and comprehend that massive document. And, uh, and like I said, not, I'm not saying we don't trust what's going on, but it would be nice to understand sometimes if, uh, you know, how much money is being spent uh, in parks or how much money is actually spent and what it's going for rather than just saying, here's a number, here's a budget, and uh, trust us that we, and, and our, the budget's fine. I just don't know if uh, we shouldn't have at least a, a better working knowledge of the document before it's presented. So that's an unreasonable request. I, I, I put that aside, but that's kind of the way I kind of feel about it. And it's open for discussion on the dais. If anybody has any comments, if you don't, then maybe I'll sit in on some of the budget things because I know it's difficult and we just have X number of dollars to perform the functions of this community. But I just sometimes feel like I need to know more and and you will tell me more. I just have to ask for it. So I'm asking for it. So that's how I feel about it. Yeah, I understand. I actually feel like if anything, historically probably overloaded with information because there are numerous discussions um, that, that we have with uh, the commissioners. Obviously, the, the projects that are included are typically things that, that don't come out of thin air. They're things that you guys have asked about or, or inquired about. So it's not like I, you know, I arbitrarily make things up uh, that are included in the budget, uh, of course. So. Uh, happy to discuss or put as, as much information as there as you'd like. So I try to parcel it out and, and you know, give you an initial version that's very small and kind of a, a summary of bullet point and then more information and then more information and then ultimately culminating in the, 
you know the, the presentation which did get very long this year so uh, we can we can kind of reassess how we we do that I guess uh, I just think it's worth the discussion you know like you meet with Commissioner Sanford and Castlin every week I have no idea what y'all are talking about so information you're giving them I don't I'm not privy to so when we have some kind of when we get together I don't know what you all have talked about so that's that's kind of where I'm saying is sometimes there's a kind of a break in in the communication and it's it's difficult. I, you know, I'm not that good on those numbers, ask Angela. So <laughs> I just think there's sometimes, um, you know, and it's not that I'm trying to make it about me. I'm just trying to say these are some comments that I hear from the community that, you know, and granted, what did we spend, four and a half hours on the budget the other day? And I thought, you know, that's pretty good. But those numbers were decided when they came here. And if that's the way city manager former government is supposed to be then so be it I just know that I've been involved I think maybe it was Bobby when we had all department heads came and presented their wants and their needs and and discussed how they were going to spend the taxpayer dollars you know and, and so I'm just thinking it's, it's food for thought doesn't have to be done but you know because I certainly don't have any idea what Stephen Franklin's going to do with all those people and all those things they got to do. But you, I just feel like that I personally need to be a little bit more uh, involved in the thought process, not necessarily the decision making process. Okay. Any other discussion? Commissioner Glenn. I, I just have one other concern. It's not related to our strict budget. We're going to be. Uh, have a unique opportunity to be allocated and correct me Nate if I got the number wrong 13.6 million dollars is that what our federal government 13.3 be? actually we have a, a later agenda item about that and I'll talk about, about okay. that a little bit later but I would just say general statement in two sentences is I think it's very important that the public be you know uh, have it explained to them because I know federal government money, they just we all think they just hand it out, throw it out in a bag, and say do what you want. I know that's not the case. It's it's the exact opposite. And I think it's very important for the public uh, in the community to understand what the boundaries are, because we know we can't just go spend on anything we want. We can't just lump it into the general fund. I, but I think communication is key, uh, because if you don't, you're going to have a lot of angry citizens. And you know what? Just by so it's our tax dollars, just like our city tax dollars are. Uh, so yeah, if you're going to address that later, that's good. But I do think it's important to get ahead of that because if we don't, we're going to have a lot of people going, oh, you got $13 million. You should never have to raise taxes again. You got $13 million. How come all the streets aren't fixed? We need to explain why that's not the case and what the parameters are. And I think if we do that, we'll all be better off. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Good comments. Okay. Do I vote now? Oh, Commissioner Sanford. I'll, I'll expand on what the mayor said about the budget. Uh, I, I typically... I think you have a good idea because I think people ask me sometimes, you know, why this, why that. And I think we could get a little bit more detail of why by being there, maybe an understanding from some of the department heads. So when I get asked a question out in public, I have a, I have a better understanding. Rather than just say, come look at this book. <laughs> yeah, I just have a little bit better of an understanding and not, not to say you're not doing a great job, but you are. I just so I'm better it helps me be better out to the public and that's my job so it, I, I would like to be better at what I do so because yeah, in essence you all work for the elected officials and sometimes it feels like we're working for for you and that's what I'm trying to get across you know we we just need to be included in the discussion sometimes and you know that's just why I feel better uh, Commissioner Caslin, yes. get uh, up there by that mic so everybody can hear the. It's kind of like whenever, uh, you know, we had the sister cities come in and speak. It cleared up a lot of uh, the fog that we had about the sister cities. And, you know, I, I agree with the mayor. It's, it's a good, well, you know, good to have a presentation brought in. What's important to me might not be important to you. What's important to, you know, I'm gonna pick on Stephen because I, what's important to him might not be important to Commissioner Glenn. I mean, that's the whole idea of transparency and the opportunity for us to understand what we're trying. If if you want to, if if you're happy, you know, going by, I'm not saying 
happy with it, but you know, there's a lot to this community, and there's a lot of little things that I've been, this is my ninth year as mayor, and I'm learning something every day, and I can't imagine what you've been drinking through a fire hydrant since you got here, you mm -hmm. know, and how much, how difficult it is to try and consume some of this, and, and I just, I, I just think the, and it's up, it's, it's incumbent upon us to make the effort to ask. It's not really, uh, it's, it's, and every, I mean, I've been here nine years, and if, if I text Miss Hammer, I mean Miss uh, Tesla lady, Angela Wanager, Wanager um, I mean within, by the time I put my phone down, she's already <laughs> texted me back and got, got an answer, and that's <laughs> awesome. But uh, as new folks come in, sometimes you really, like Mark and I sat down for an hour or two, and, he says, I got these questions, and I, and I literally had to tell him, well, you don't want to go through the city manager for this. You know, you want to talk to Bigfoot. You want to talk to Kevin Cole. You know, and those things are when you don't even have the, the um, knowledge of who does what sometimes, and we're improving a budget just on faith and trust, which we do have. It just seems like we could, we as elected officials need to be more involved and can do a better job of putting ourselves in the position to learn more about what, how we how we go about our business. So I'm not putting that on the elected official, I mean on the staff, okay? So where am I, Ms. Davis? We, we don't are, vote yet? We are ready to vote. Okay, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Roll call, please. Excuse me. Commissioner Sanford? Yes. Commissioner Castlin? Yes. Mayor Watson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Magliner? Yes. Commissioner Glenn? Yes. Thank you. Item seven, first reading, none. Item eight, municipal orders. Regular vote, no roll call. I'll make a motion to approve. Could I have a second? second. Oops, we need to read it first. We need to have the reading. Okay, please. go ahead and read it. See? I mean, they're eight years, nine years. I still need <laughs> Beth to tell me what I'm doing wrong. 8A is Municipal Order 21-2021, a municipal order authorizing and directing the mayor to execute an application for a Bulletproof Vest Partnership, BVP, initiative grant administered by the Bureau of Justice Assistance, designed to provide critical resources to law enforcement jurisdictions for the purposes of reimbursing the Owensboro Police Department for 50% of the total cost of $25,739.70 expended to purchase 35 new bulletproof vests and plates, that amount being $12,869.85. Introduced and publicly read for approval this 18th day of May, 2021. I'll make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. City Manager, you have anything to say? Usually, yes. Uh, this municipal order authorizes a grant application to replace 35 bulletproof vests. This is a 50-50 grant, meaning we would pay half the cost and the grant would provide the other half and our share would be $12,869. We typically budget to replace bulletproof vests every year, so we have the funds available to satisfy our match if we are awarded the grant. Thank you, is that part of the replacement plan? I don't think that's actually in the replacement plan. That's actually funded from the police department's property fund where we get seized and forfeited assets and we use those funds uh, and hopefully grant funds to provide equipment such as this. Okay. Any other discussion? Chief, you got triple X? Yeah. Okay. No, <laughs> 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 I'll borrow yours. <laughs> Okay, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries, thank you. Item 8B, Ms. Davis. Municipal Order 22-2021, a municipal order authorizing the request and acceptance of coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery funds from the U.S. Department of the Treasury under the 2021 American Rescue Plan Act in the amount of 13 million three hundred twenty four thousand one hundred and seventy five dollars 
and authorizing and directing the mayor to execute any documents which are required to reimburse the city and further authorizing the mayor to act as the authorized correspondent for reimbursement. Introduced and publicly read for approval this 18th day of May, 2021. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. City Manager, would you like to make a comment on this? Yes, this municipal order approves the submission of the request and ultimate acceptance of the $13,324,000 $175 allocated to the city in the American Rescue Plan Act and for mayor to sign the required paperwork for us to receive the funds. We expect to receive the first half of the funds later this month. Uh, while some guidance has been issued, it is still relatively sparse, so hopefully additional information about the use of the funding will be forthcoming. And we plan to brief the board soon, likely at the June work session. Thank you. Any discussion? Did that answer your questions, Commissioner Glenn? I think they're going to when we have our work session. Because it doesn't say the city manager to execute. It says the mayor to execute it. So that's that's kind of the, what I'm talking about. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Item 9, city manager items. Uh, Mayor Angela Waninger will present the April financial report. Ms. Waninger. Yes, Mayor. Um, for the April financial report, um, you have the full financial packet. So if you would like to refer to page three for more detail um, in accompaniment with the PowerPoint, then um, that would be helpful. Laptop. Yes, sir. So my PowerPoint presentation will be on the general fund activity for the month of in the 10 months ended April 2021. As I mentioned earlier, you can refer to page three of the financial packet for more information, more detail. Our first slide here uh, for the month of April 2021, our actual revenues of $5,990,190 were higher than budgeted revenues of $5,963,548 for a mere small variance of $26,642. That is primarily due to higher net profit license fees offset by lower insurance premium license fees. Of course, we know the month of April is traditionally our big uh, tax month. Uh, several folks still filed timely, but um, I won't 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 kid you. April 17th was a very busy day downstairs <laughs> as well. So we had some file at the normal time, and some took advantage of that later uh, filing opportunity. Uh, Miss Bonner, could yes. I? I don't want to blindside you with this question, but uh -huh. how does our insurance premium tax? How's it doing? Is it? as expected is it lower than expected it, it, or for year to date it's a little bit lower and um from talk with fellow finance directors and in, in different uh, media resources that i have access to because of the covid we're seeing they're seeing people uh, maybe get higher uh, deductibles um, less yeah. coverage uh, not insuring things they don't have to just to save money and so um, the premium is what is charged to the insurance company 10 percent of the premium paid by the taxpayer um, and so th the insurance company then charges the tax pay we charge the insurance company and they pay it to us but they pass it on to the taxpayer so it, we're lagging a little bit behind um, from what we budgeted uh, we hope to see that turn around our next fiscal year That's my, you know from, i was at fiscal court the other day and they were lined up down the hallway, out the door, and on the steps buying cars. And because of the st stimulus money and all the unemployment plus 300 and all that stuff. So that's why I was curious as to, because I would think they'd have to buy insurance. So I, would th I was just curious how it was uh, lining up yeah. accordingly. Yeah, um, to, yeah, with a loan, obviously you have to have the insurance. And if you don't have a loan, you, you could get by with liability coverage only and and so um if the car's paid off so uh like i said I, I do hope that we see that trend turn around because the mindset before covid 19 was that with um the hurricanes you know all the tra traumatic things we have across the nation that would make premiums rise for sure. all of us and so hopeful that you know we would see an increase there 
but uh, we're not see, seeing that with the COVID-19 pandemic. Yes. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, You're welcome, Mayor. Yeah. Um, and for our second slide, um, is the 10 months ended April uh, 2021. Actual revenues of $57,327,796 were higher than the budgeted revenues. Sorry, I thought I had. It is now. Uh, where's where's <laughs> Sorry about that. So um, higher than the budgeted revenues of 56,897,394. So we have a, a positive variance of $430,402. This positive variance is primarily due to higher occupational tax withholding, net profit license fees and property tax revenue, partially offset by the lower insurance premium license fee. Uh, other revenues and lower in lieu of, which is offset by lower in lieu of expenses. Our next slide is the general fund expenditures for the month of April. Our actual expenditures of $5,309,550 were less than budgeted expenditures of $5,554,690 for a variance of $235,140. This variance is primarily all mostly due to savings and personnel services due to vacancies that we have. Our next slide is for the 10 months ended April for actual expenditures of $46,771,277, less than the budgeted expenditures of $50,885,222 for variance of $4,113,946. This variance is primarily due to savings and personal services, timing and capital, supplies, and outside services. This is our last slide. As you can see on the chart, our revenues and expenses are cyclical, meaning that expenses exceed revenues in the warmer months when street and grounds maintenance and parks are in full swing. Likely, there are month, likewise, there are months that have higher revenues, such as October and November for collection of real and personal property taxes and April uh, for net profits. Timing, due to a variety of reasons, can affect when monthly activity is reflected as well. If anyone has any questions on this or the financial packet, I'd be happy to try and answer. Any questions? Hearing none. Do you have a? a oh, okay. Okay. So all in favor indicate by saying aye to file for financial report for audit. All in favor indicate. Am I good? We need a motion, please. We need a motion, please. I have a motion to file for audit. So moved. Second, Second. please. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Mayor. Yo. Uh, if I may, can I follow up on a question from our work session that uh, Absolutely. Commissioner Glenn had asked about? It was on our chart. Um, it was the general fund expenditures for the fiscal year ended 2020. Um, the total expenditures were 58149571 And if you'll recall, he had asked what makes up the other category of 8%, which uh, equates to $4.6 million, which I thought was a good question because other is a catch-all category. And so I just pulled some information together to share with, with you all and to answer Commissioner Glenn's uh, question and for our viewing, viewing audience as well. And other is just that. It's, it's the catch-all category. Uh, a lot of our general uh, government items are in there. Um, street lighting, miscellaneous expenses, our insurance expense, uh, contractual services, professional technical, or COVID-19. Um, and there's some other things, um, advertising, training, and things like that. Uh, but the ones I mentioned are the biggest um, of those. And uh, in the monthly financials, it's the same categories, and you'll see the other, but that's what it's made up of. So it was a good question, and I just wanted to follow up with you all in, in our viewing audience to answer that. See what I mean about her? Ask a question, she's got an answer. <laughs> Does that satisfy you, Commissioner Glenn? Yes, sir. Thank, uh, you. thank you, Ms. Wanaker. You're welcome. Okay. I have 9B. Uh, just one personnel appointment tonight. Corey Moore, regular, full-time, non-civil service appointment to police officer, effective May 13th. 
I'll gladly make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. 9C, City Manager comments? None tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Item 10, communication from elected officials. Commissioner Sanford. Uh, just a couple things, Mayor. Uh, I wanted first to thank, uh, I think I turned it into Nate. We had some uh, some pro properties that looked like people were running businesses out of and they were really nice or two neighborhoods and you guys got out there and you got them cleaned up. I guess it, that would be Joe Sublet. Yeah. And he, I, I, I re thank you from me, but a thank you from the neighbors too who had to look at that for a while and then now it's all cleaned up and I appreciate that yeah uh, number two just quickly uh, we asked about uh, the traffic downtown and I mentioned to you the other day I, uh, I saw uh, chief one of your guys uh, there was a kid rolling down second pretty good and you guys got him pulled over and uh, you know I don't know what happened but I appreciate I appreciate that I just don't want someone getting getting run over downtown on the weekends when there's a lot of a lot of people downtown and uh, I also wanted to mention, you know, we had talked about doing some different things and I kind of wanted to see where we were at maybe with, we had talked about closing it, we had talked about speed humps, we've talked about maybe maybe one lane might be a uh, an idea. I wanted to kind of just see where we were at or have we, I know you're engineering or whoever was looking and uh, you guys were looking right, at We there. are, we are and uh, I think that's actually scheduled for a presentation at the June work session as well okay thank you yeah because I'm tired of hearing about it as well yeah. I mean somebody sent me a text the other day and said well just put barrels up <laughs> and let them go through the barrels and that'll slow them down <laughs> and I said what's the chance of them not hitting those barrels I mean that's how you know yeah. and it's a, a small group of people but a vocal group of people yeah and the, my problem there is if you know if a kid were to get hit I, I would feel awful I mean, I, I'm, I'm, t I'm, you know, talking about it, and it takes one person to do something, and someone's going to get. Yeah, I won't go right. down there and eat because I don't want to get lambasted yeah, by all that I, same I just, question. I just think, and we uh, just keep saying no, no, yeah, no. I'm ready to get. And I don't done. know what the answer is, but it just gets old after a year or so, and it's been at least three years when OBK or however long that yeah. was. Well, so. when my friend, you know, I'm down there with people and they're asking me, looking at me, what am I, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> yeah. It gets old. Yeah. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Cashlin, do you don't have anything? Well, it's your turn. Commissioner Cashlin. Thank you, Mayor Watson. Uh, I just kind of wanted to bring up something that uh, I talked to the chief about, and uh, it was the fireworks on the 4th of July. And, you know, how the people get rowdy, shoot the fireworks at the police, and uh, you know, basically assault our police. And I would just like for the the parents and uh, those that are responsible to uh, go ahead and reconsider doing that. It's not something that's fun. I know the Fourth of July is coming up here; It'll be a little over a month but it's a good time for parents to take control of their children and limit the amount of fireworks that they let them purchase and to make sure that they are aware where their children are during the 4th of July so that they're not out um, really causing criminal acts against the public and our police force. That's it. Yeah, I would just soon not have any temporary business license from any outsider come in and sell fireworks in our community. I'd just soon do that, to be honest with you, because I don't know what kind of revenue that generates, but it generates more aggravation than revenue as far as I'm concerned. Commissioner Maglinger, uh, Mayor you, Pro Tem. Um, so this Friday is our first Friday after 5. It looks like the weather's going to be good. There's a lot of great music uh, going on so i hope everybody gets to come out and enjoy our downtown and maybe we could all find out who let the dogs out <laughs> <laughs> who let the dogs out Thank commissioner you. glenn yes uh, just a couple of things briefly uh want to congratulate dugan best neighborhood alliance on their cleanup this weekend 
Uh, the Western Academy at the Neblet Center had uh, what I think is their second class of graduating 12-year-old African-American young men who've gone through a leadership training course along with their parents. They finished that up. Um, I think that the police have addressed this, and I appreciate that as well. There's concerns among the Northwest Neighborhood Alliance about Hager, traffic near Hager Preschool and Faust Elementary, uh, people driving too quickly there. And I, th I think you all began to address that, and that's good because a lot of parents were very concerned about that safety issue. And then the last thing I want to just address is the CDC, of course, has changed their, their tone on masks. And they've said if you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask in most situations. Uh, I would just say this, uh, I told this to my congregation at church the other day, I'm going to wear a mask when I'm at church because I'm out in the public a lot, I come across a lot of people, I don't want to infect you, and you can always be asymptomatic and never know you have it. Uh, but I do think, you know, it's a sign of the, a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, but I would encourage people now that 12 to 15-year-olds can get the, the uh, vaccine, I really would encourage you to talk to your doctor. I really would encourage you to get the, the correct information from medical authorities. And if you can get the vaccine, if you're healthy enough to do so, please do so. Uh, and then you really won't have to wear a mask in public. Uh, and that would be a positive step for all of us. But I, I'm heartened by what the CDC's come across. I just think that uh, it would be great if more people had take, taken the vaccine. In Kentucky, we are at two, we just topped two million Kentuckians. And I think the governor's choke point was 2.4 so we're getting there as a state as a commonwealth we're getting there and that's heartening thank you yeah the younger kids are getting vaccinated because the other older people won't that's why they're dropping down in number in age length um this week uh we celebrated charles kimmel 101 years old world war ii veteran i took him out of a, a, a little outstanding service assigned by all of us as a commission uh, he was so cute. I uh, gave him one of those little challenge coins, and he just looked up at me and said, how much owe you for this? You know, and his wife's 90, and she just putters around that house and just sweet. And Jesse uh, brought a bunch of the veterans uh, from the VFW out there, and they did a nice little drive through. And so celebrated 101-year-old World War II veterans, really kind of special for our community. Um, Friday. Uh, our, we have our orange, the city sponsoring Friday after five. Uh, I called uh, Dr. Dufresne, the medical director at the hospital, and asked him what about the clinic at, on the at Friday after five. So with Leland's help, uh, Bigfoot Hancock, um, we're going to have a, a a way to get vaccinated at Friday after five. Uh, it'll be in the parking lot next to the little TV station there. Uh, and I know Adrian's going to have our um, Neighborhood Alliance folks across the street over there at the River Park Center. So you'll be able to get a, it's a mobile vaccine clinic. So there'll be five, seven tables set up or something, something in that neighborhood. So you can come and get, uh, and when you do, you'll get OBKY t-shirts. So they'll, they'll come on there. So I'm hopeful that... Uh, It'll be worthwhile, and Owensboro Health has committed to uh, participating uh, every Friday after five through the whole season. So that's a, it's a pretty big deal. Public Works, Leland, Adrian, they put all the things together, and um, they had a, and it's a, hopefully we'll get a few takers. Uh, um, we'll see. And the next item I'd like to announce to this community is this for immediate release. Uh, from the White House Drug Policy Office designates Davis County to help reduce the supply, supply of illicit drugs and expand national overdose response. In the midst of the ongoing overdose and addiction epidemic, the White House Office of National Drug and Control Policy and Acting Director Regina LaBelle announced today that additional six counties have been funded with the high intensity drug trafficking areas. Davis County will receive one of only six counties in America receive the HIDA designation, which will enable authorities in Davis County to better coordinate law enforcement operations in local, state, and federal authorities. Now, we do a fabulous job, as you could tell from the meth bus and the fentanyl bus, by having Evansville and all of the chief and the sheriff and everything, but I think this is a big deal. Uh, being able just to be on one of six, uh, I think 
this community has applied, what, see, four or five times over the last 15 or 20 years. Um, I don't know about the finances of it, but right now we are designated as a HIDA designation, and, and that basically has the opportunity for federal funds to come to our local community to help us with drugs. Um, I have been looking into a few d different HIDA folks to see what kind of revenue they've been <laughs> receiving, uh, and uh, anything's welcome. We'll be under the auspices of Ash, uh, Appalachian HIDA, Vic Brown. Is that right, Vic? Yeah, back Vic Brown and um, we and the chief and the sheriff's department. And I have to thank uh, FBI uh, the gentleman uh, Devine, Ted Devine. What is it? Tom Devine. Yeah, he put his heart and soul in this um, and uh, got the paperwork done. Uh, it was forwarded to the appropriate place, and we sent a copy to Senator McConnell and, and his lead counsel, and they helped uh, push us along. And um, uh, I am just tickled to death because when we had several meetings, and we weren't sure that federal attorney was, was he was kind of preparing us for the worst and uh, but I, I, I truly want people to understand it's not that the the local and the state and the FBI and the DEA and even Indiana are not coordinating together we never would have had that bust of that mess but this hopefully will allow us to have a little more funds for the the, the guys with the boots on the ground and, and that's the the idea of starting this three years ago and and uh, I'm so thankful for Senator McConnell and and Mr. De and uh, Officer Devine and Chief Elam, Sheriff Kane, and, um, and all the rest of the parties that that participated in getting this done. So I kind of giddy about it. I guess that's why I missed my mark a couple of nights on this, some of these votes and stuff. But I'm hopeful that it's going to be very helpful. Any other discussion? Uh, we're still not doing the public forum, right? We are. Oh, okay. Is it worth reading this thing? Okay. Members of the audience are invited to address the city commission on any item or matter of public concern that was not on tonight's agenda. Comments are limited to issues within the scope and responsibility of this commission. Commission meetings are held to conduct city business for the benefit of Orangeboro citizens. This time, anyone who wishes to address the city commission, please make their way to the podium to be recognized. Okay, seeing no one is recognized, um, I will make a motion to adjourn. Could I have a second, please? Second. Any discussion about adjourning? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Ooh.